Hello, this is Jerry. I'm going to be doing a comparison of the Benchmade Claymore and the Benchmade Claymore counterfeit. And I want to do a shout out to Risky Krisky. I think he's doing a really good thing for the community of, um, you know, let's just say <laughs> for patriots, for America right now. We're going, this is a tough time for America, but I'll, I'll leave his, uh, the details down in my description. So anyway, and, and if I run out of room on this video, I apologize. I'm going to try to get it all on one, but it's going to be kind of long. But um, first of all, I went to a pawn shop and a gun shop tonight, and they had bought from a guy a counterfeit Benchmade Adamas. And they sold it to somebody unknowing. And it's like, you know, when I come in there, they ask me because I've told them. I've showed them what to look out for. And before, when I showed them, I think it was the fact, the Benchmade fact, I bought the auto, the counterfeit, and I bought the real thing, the fact manual. So before, you, it was easy to tell because the, the um, Benchmade boxes, the counterfeit was printed on, and the real thing had a sticker. Well, now these are both, one of them is the counterfeit, and one of them is the real thing. The one I bought from House of Blades, the real thing, is right here. And you can see they put the sticker. So that's the way I can tell. Otherwise, you cannot tell the difference. Okay? I'm going to be honest, too. I mean, the Chinese company that makes this, and I'm not going to say their name, they tell you, if you do reviews, don't show pictures of the knife because in the I bought it at AliExpress. <clears throat> they may not sell them anymore. I don't care. I'm going to be honest with you. They say, don't show it, you know, don't show the whole knife because they show blurred out images and stuff. But um, I don't want people to think that I'm one of these guys that all I do is buy, you know, clones and um, Chinese knives. It's not true. It's not true at all. I do buy them. You know, I buy Microtech. I buy Zero Tolerance. I buy Protec. And some of those I bought, you know, some clones. But I buy them to keep. I also have some of the classic, you know, like that I've had to buy that were in my original collection, you know, Benchmade. And I've had to spend a lot to buy them the second time because they've been so long discontinued. So I do support American companies. And I buy knives. Um, and I spend a lot on some of them. And I don't like buying counterfeits i've already done it with a puma buoy and it pisses me off because I, I paid the premium price for a counterfeit i would have still bought the knife and paid more than it was worth like i'm going to show you another that i bought for me and it's just for me it's the chris reed um, sabenza it's a counterfeit and i bought it for me i think i paid 50 or 75 it's well made it's titanium you know it's not cpms 35 vn but whatever it is hcr 13 mov or whatever i don't care it sharpens and it's good and it's got a really nice hollow grind it, for me i'm not buying the real chris reeve i don't buy very many knives over 350 i mean i have a few times but just not very often it's not for me same thing with the stitch i am not in the market for a stitch this is a counterfeit uh, to me a knife has to be useful I, either like gentleman's carry or survival or just hellacious tactical um hunting whatever but you know this is cool but it doesn't fall in any of those categories this is not a hunting knife tactical wouldn't be the best choice but it's cool but i'm not going to spend 500 600 800 whatever they go for for the real thing i'm just not i'm not that i don't have that kind of money first of all for me when I bought the Claymore, now I'll get down to what I'm talking about. The Claymore here, this is the real one, okay? I, I said I wasn't going to buy it because it's gravery. And I thought, you know, 240 or 220 is a lot of money. But I do know Benchmade quality and their warranty is just hellacious. Great, you know? So I get that. And this is CPM D2 steel blade. Uh, it's just flawless you know i mean i know this is going to serve me well for it and i could count on my life with it you know and uh i've already went through one and i'm not going to say the name of the company that on aliexpress but this company i've had good i've bought some really good clones or counterfeits whatever some of them are clones 
um, this Fisher is not a counterfeit. It's more of a kind of a clone. Everybody that knows Fisher says you can see from across the room. It's not they're not trying to copy it or clone or counterfeit it, but it's just like inspired by, I guess you could say. So, um, and another one like this, this Protec, I like it, but I've had the real thing before. And this one is so thin. I mean, it's a lot thinner than the real Protec. Probably they want theirs to be a little more sturdy. I don't know. But there are some things I like about this better. And I bought it from the same company that I really like. And I believe it was 50 Pretty much 25 and 50 are their two prices. So, um, to me, this is not real useful like tactical. It's cool factor, hell yes. But I'm not going to spend $250 for, for cool factor. I think that's what they're going for now. But I will spend 50 and get this. But I don't want to get them on the market and sell it. And when I have sold a few of the, the counterfeits... I don't sell the boxes with them because I don't want to be part of that, you know, where people are passing off the, well, this is the real box, but, you know, here, I want to show you, let's just, just get right down to it, okay? Here's one thing I can tell. Um, this is the, the counterfeit. You can see that it hangs up. Now, I could probably loosen and work on the pivot right there, but when I tried, it either had a lot of Loctite, and I'm not going to screw it up because, you know, I already have one broken one, and I got this to use and then but because it the, the first one broke within a few weeks the first the the firing spring there's two that's how they make this fire so hard there's a coil spring on each side not just one spring <clears throat> that's pretty cool on the counterfeit one day it was just like half it was firing half as hard as before and then i'm like damn that's weird the next day it quit firing all together so i took it apart that's when i learned they put two springs this is the real thing. I'll show you up close. The the stop pin on this one, you can see it's like hexagon shaped. So when it when it opens, it's landing on a flat edge and not a round um, stop pin. And I'm guessing there's probably a couple of reasons for that. If you have a, a flat piece of metal hitting a round piece, it's, it can deform and then cause a little bit of um, lock rock okay so i think that's why benchmade does that and um the afo2 is the same and um I, i've heard i'm not sure if it's true that like also if there is that lock rock they can turn it a little like it's it's different every side is shaped a little bit different one's thicker than the other or whatever so you can adjust it and make that knife um tight again where there's no you know where it locks up tight but the chinese has it's round and the adamas that i seen today that that counterfeit was like that it was round and i'm guessing that it's probably not supposed to be either but there's a few other things like um how this thing fires like how much you push it like this is the counterfeit you barely push it there's just it's barely holding it in there you see what i mean or i don't know if you can tell you barely push it and it opens okay so it doesn't have a lot of room for, like, it's not, I really wouldn't want to count, and here is, like, what it locks open with, okay? It's not a whole lot. Okay, you can see that? That's all that's locking this knife. Now, the real one, um, uh, this is what's locking it closed. It's quite a bit, okay? That's quite a bit of, and on these button locks, there's a little, like, a cutout on the blade and uh, there's one to keep it open and there's one um, here's the one that opens the knife or keeps it locked open and there's the other one that locks it one that locks it open and one that locks it closed so here's the one that locks it closed here's how much meat you're getting you see how, how much that button popped up all oh, that's locking this thing closed the Chinese barely come up at all so it's like it would be pretty easy for that thing, I would think, to come open in your pocket. And that's a concern. I mean, that's going to put you out of action if you're, you know, yeah, just would. I mean, so anyway, that's why I bought, I said I wasn't originally. I was just going to be happy with the clone. When it fell apart, I'm like, okay, this is one. Now, I like it because it's so lightweight. 
when I'm walking my dog at night and I'm in sweatpants, you know, I want this and I want something I can count on. Same thing like when I bought this TR4. I wanted a heavy duty knife with a skull crusher. It's auto and a big blade. It's that I can count on if things are getting really bad. And this is why I bought this. Also, I wanted the, you know, the um, Micro Microtech SOCOM Elite. Kind of the scenario if you could only have one knife. Um, and I have the fixed blade in this also. So on these, I, do, I was in the market for the real thing. But I wasn't on this, but I liked it so much that I couldn't help it. And I went ahead and spent that 200 and I believe it's 220 and they are going for up to 240 in some places but it's bench made quality I know their warranties are great you know I just I think it's a dickwad thing to do to pass off the, the counterfeit as the real thing I think that's just a shitty thing to do and I'm just don't be that guy or girl woman whatever don't do that man I mean I, I bought I buy knives on the used market. If you do that, your name is going to be shit after that. Nobody's going to trust you anymore. And everybody I've dealt with knows that what I have, I mean, I do buy some of these, but I would never sell something knowing it's a counterfeit or a clone and try to pass it off for the real thing. That's not cool. You know, and that's why I'm making these videos too. I want to help people so you don't fall into that trap because it sucks when you spend the full price for something and you bought a counterfeit that's a shitty feeling and it's a shitty thing to do i do know sometimes it happens by accident that's why if i sold and i wouldn't sell it because it's a 25 five dollar knife it's not worth selling to me because i couldn't sell for more than that and if i did i'm sure as hell not going to sell the counterfeit box with it i'm not going to contribute to that and i have sold a few of the counterfeit knives because they were nicer knives and you know like say, maybe I can reach it without screwing things up here. Um, okay, I can get to it. Yeah. Okay, this Hinder, um, Rick Hinder, um, this was like 140 I paid on the AliExpress. I don't remember the company. And you can see that it has a flaw. Look, it doesn't, the sheep's foot, or the edge, the cutting edge is has like a the upswept right here, you know, where it's not straight. And the the um, detent is really weak on it. So it has some flaws, but I would never sell this. This is a user. This is a hard use user for me. Like if I want to cut a lot of boxes and stuff, I'm not afraid to use it. If I bought the real thing, I'd be afraid to use it. So, um, you know, I would never sell that. It's a user for me. I like it too much. But if I sold it, I would have to say, hey, this is this is a counterfeit or a clone or whatever. And like I said, I paid 140 I would hope that I could at least get 80 or 90 for it, you know. But I would be, have to be honest with the person to feel right and sleep at night. And the thing, I don't like to do that a lot because every time I do that, there is a chance of somebody down the line trying to pass it off for the real thing on eBay or something and I don't, I don't like that so it does make me a little nervous because I don't want to be part of the problem for me buying them and keeping them keeping them I don't have a problem at all and also if I would not do it on eBay to strangers because I, I have a feeling that would happen on deliberately so if I do sell them it's gonna be somebody that I'm familiar with and trust and know they're not buying it to resell as the real thing because I just don't like that I like the people that I deal with in that pawn shop and gun shop today and I told them I was gonna make this video so when I first met them I showed them the boxes how the um, the counterfeit it was just printed it wasn't a sticker now they're making the sticker so they're really accurate you cannot tell the difference here's the both here's the, the, the counterfeit and the the real thing the real thing like i said has the sticker this was bought from house of blades in fort worth so i know it's real if you're buying at a gun show and you don't know the dealer and they're selling for a hundred dollars less than they usually go for and they're staying some bench made you're buying a counterfeit bench maids are pretty much gonna be 
basically within 30 or 40 dollars of the same across the board i think they have a minimum price they can sell for i think uh, most of the reputable companies are pretty much like that maybe not so much boker or somebody that they may fluctuate a little bit more i don't know but you know i mean it's just a shitty thing to do and, and i've done that i bought you know like i said the puma buoy and i still would have bought it knowing it was a counterfeit because it was a good one but it pisses me off they sold it to me as the real thing and it's not so you know um yeah i, I guess that's really all i have and let's just keep our side of the street clean let's do the right thing okay guys i mean that's it's a it's a dirty thing to do buying counterfeits and passing them off for the real thing you know don't don't ruin your own reputations by that people are not going to trust you anymore and there's facebook groups just for that where they're exposing the dirt bags out there doing it so i disagree with what's his name um that makes those 700 dollars knives and says that we're colluding with the enemy for buying chinese knives i disagree with that I don't feel like I'm colluding with the enemy, but I'm certainly not going to screw people over like that. That ain't right, you know. But anyway, thank you for watching and take care. It looks like I made it all the way through without having to start over or whatever. But y'all take care and thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Bye.